So if we look at the actual render now, we can see that just by using the default settings of Chronos, we've actually achieved a half speed slowdown. However, if you look carefully at the actual footage, you can see that the actual canoe paddle has got some flex on there. The pixels are flexing and there are some artifacts occurring where the frames haven't actually blended together properly and the vector detail is off. The way to fix this is that we have to actually apply a mat to the sequence and so we can differentiate between the actual foreground and the background. So in this case the foreground will be the paddle and the background will be everything else. So let's go back into Nuke and do this. So now we're back in Nuke, we can try and solve this problem of the actual frame erroring out. So what we need to do now is actually apply a mat input. So what we need to do is draw a Bezier shape. So we can separate between the foreground vectors and the background vectors to stop them actually getting confused between which is moving quicker in the foreground and which is actually slowing down in the background. So we avoid that artifact where the frames are actually flexing and causing all the artifacts occurring. So we just apply a Bezier shape to the paddle, which is where we know the problems are occurring. So we just zoom in on this a little bit. And we just draw a tight rotor around the actual paddle and it doesn't have to be too tight it just has to encompass the actual paddle itself now on some rare occasions you may find that a loose mat works better than a tight mat but on this occasion what we need to do is just apply a tight mat to this and what we need to do now is actually keyframe this along all of the actual frames that we have where the paddle is occurring out of the water so instead of doing this now, here is one I prepared earlier. So I'll just delete this one. And I'll just input my Bezier shape. And you can see I've keyframed this around each of the sequences. Now you see it's free time there for a second. But if we go back into the channel mode itself, you'll see that I've keyframed this along all the frames that the frame, the paddle is actually in the sequence. Let's go back to frame one. Now, what you'll need to do now is the input this Bezier shape into the mat input of the actual Kronos node. Let's attach this now. And if we double click on the Kronos node, you have to see that we have to actually tell it exactly the type of mat that we have. In this case, it's an alpha mat. So now we've inputted this in. Let's just look through the actual node itself. Just take a second to catch up with us using the calculations. So once the mat input has been attached and the best is taking place in the calculation, and we've told the Kronos node exactly the type of mat that we have, and we look through the Kronos node, you can see that the image has been retimed, yet the mat input has stayed stable. This is because the mat hasn't been retimed on the actual timeline itself, but internally within Kronos, the mat has been applied to the sequence. Now we can see the mat itself on frame one by changing the actual results on the actual output, so we can see just the mat. Just give it a second to actually calculate. As so you can see, the mat has been retimed with the paddle. If we just take away the actual Bezier shape itself, you can see that the mat has taken place there and been retimed with the actual sequence itself. So we can go back on results and you can see they all match up. Let's bring the Bezier back on. So now we've inputted the mat sequence into this and improved the actual results of this because now we can actually differentiate between the foreground vectors which are going to be concentrating on the actual paddle itself and the background vectors which are going to be calculating everything else. We can now also help these vectors by increasing the actual vector detail to improve them and sharpen them up. Now for this particular image sequence and render, increasing the vector detail will improve results for us. Now you can increase the vector detail to 0 0.3. Now by increasing the vector detail, we actually vary the density of the vector field. Now the larger the vector detail is, the greater the processing time, but the more detailed the vector should be, which gives you a more accurate retiming and an accurate render. A value of 1 will generate the vector field at every 4 pixels. A value of 0 0.5 will generate a vector field at every 16 pixels. Now, for some sequences, a high vector detail near a 1 
which you generate too much unwanted local motion estimation. This will lead to the blurring artifacts that we saw in the previous render. And often a low value, such as 0 0.2 or 0 0.3, will give you a more appropriate render, a more appropriate vector detail. Now, if we actually open up the advanced parameters, we see we can have a few more parameters which are over here which will help us get a much more detailed render. Now, to also actually help the actual render itself and the actual background and the foreground vectors, you can actually change the warp mode. Now, by default, this is actually set to normal. You must change this to occlusions. Now, this is an advanced option that can improve the results when not doing a separated pitch build with multiple vector sequences and mats. Now, it attempts to reduce the level of background dragging that occurs between the foreground and the background objects, giving a much more detailed retime without any artifacts occurring. So change this to occlusions. Now that we've changed a lot of these parameters to actually improve our render, we can actually check the actual vectors that are shown on the screen, simply by clicking the show vectors button, which is located in the advanced menu. So if we click this and just give the algorithm a second to catch up with us. What we're going to do now is show the actual vectors and the calculations taking place on the screen. As you can see over here, we have a lot of the vectors on the actual paddle itself and I'm actually spreading around the actual image. Now if we compare this to the actual before and after of before we change any of these results and before we apply the map, we can see a massive difference between the actual vector and screen. So if we just bring up one more actual Kronos node, and actually apply this to the sequence and view through this we can see a difference between the two so if we actually view through our actual chronos on which we have adjusted and we apply the matte sequence and actually shown all the different calculations that we can actually change we can see that our actual vectors are quite precise around the actual paddle itself and they haven't actually been spreading around wildly and you can see that the vectors actually being calculated over here are actually quite precise and they're not flexing in any way if we now change back to the actual default Kronos node, you can see that the actual vectors that have been calculated here are drastically different between the actual one we have changed and one we haven't. And you can see that there's no difference between the foreground and the background. as a lot of flux between the actual pixels, which are actually being tracked over here. So we can toggle between the two. As you can see, this one is where we actually calculated a map for sequence. We actually confine the actual vector analysis just to the paddle and not to anywhere in the sequence. As you can see a massive difference between the two. This first one being the one with a mat and this one being without. As you can see there's a massive difference between the vector calculations. So now you can see the difference between the two applying a mat and without a mat and changing some of the properties. We should now actually get a render of our Kronos node and the changes that we've made and see the exact results of this. So go ahead and produce a render. So if we play through the actual sequence now, we can see the render and we can see how much we've improved this just by applying a matte input to the actual paddle so we can differentiate between the actual foreground and the background which can improve the actual vector calculations and the retime. So we return this by half speed and we actually improved this drastically from the default results that we had previously.